Hi, everybody. Robin Eve and Donnie Vapor here, and we are really, really excited to introduce you to two friends of ours. Please welcome John and Nikki Savoka. Hi. Hey. How are you, Nikki? Can you say hi? Say hi to our hi. friends. Hey, Nikki. Hey, John. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing Thanks. great, Don. Great to see you. Great to see you, too. Thanks so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. So John is someone who has been working with his family to raise awareness and to raise funds for autism awareness. Mm. They have done incredible, incredible videos. It's on their YouTube channel and it's highlighting what Don and I like to call oh. disability. It's not disability, Love it's that. disability. It's yeah. everything that you can do to overcome challenges that are given to you. And I find that I spend time just going on John's page and watching their adventures and seeing what they're up to because it allows me to get out of my own head and out of my own way and believe in possibilities. John, tell us a little bit about how you started out, how all of this came to be, your YouTube channel, and what you guys are trying to do. Sure. So the name of the channel is Nikki TV, and we just changed it. Uh, I guess back in April or so, it started off as the Autistic Adventurers. And our, our goal was really to get Nicholas out of the house. Because like a lot of kids, but even more so with Nicholas, he, he was really a couch potato, right? He didn't really like to leave the house much. And so we made it our goal to do something really adventurous. Can you turn that down a little bit? Really adventurous at least once a week. And we were going to make a video of that adventure. And it, it worked out good for a, for a while, but what we really figured out is that it, some of it was causing Nick some anxiety about where we were going, you know, and the transitions that were involved in all of that. But we loved the videos anyway. The videos were coming out great. They were funny, um, you know, just watching them and reevaluating my parenting and, uh, and people really started to like them as well. So we continued doing the channel just minus making sure that we were getting out of the house. And so a, a big reason that we were doing, in addition to, you know, just wanting to get Nicholas out of the house and, you know, experiencing the world, what, what I really felt in my heart, and this was the piece that really bothered me, and it was something that really drove me to get Nicholas included into his regular education program at his home school district, was that nobody knew him, right? I know I have this amazing kid. I know I have a kid who is really going to have an effect on people. And we're turning out, it's turning out that he's having an effect on people all over the world. Right. But it's anonymous, right? And that's really the case with a lot of kids with special needs. They are extremely isolated. You know, the, uh, the friend circle just doesn't come to be like it does in a traditional family. So there's, you know, there's very few birthdays. There's no sleepovers. There's no kids that just come calling. And so this was my way to... Hi, Kathy. Hi, handsome. This was my way to say, you know, to just really introduce him to the world. I really wanted people to know him, you know, and I don't know if at first that was like a selfish thing for me or not, uh, but that was part of the impetus as well. And when we got him into the school, I just, I knew that, I, A, I knew he was going to be a hallway rock star because I'm a school teacher as well. And I know how the regular ed kids treat the special needs population. They love them, you know, and that's one of the beautiful things about 2020 the amount of tolerance, the amount of love, the amount of acceptance uh, that the regular red population gives our special mm -hmm. needs kids. And, and now everybody does know him. So he, initially he was going to a uh, special education school in Melville. And while they, they put forth a good effort, I just, I didn't feel connected to the community. I didn't know anybody. I mean, it was a huge school. I didn't know any of the administrators. I didn't, you know, we didn't feel like anyone in our community knew him or us. Right. And so he's been in Babylon now for three years and it has been revolutionary. Wow. He's a, he's a star in Babylon. We just did a, uh, we just did a, a, a parade for our senior who just graduated and Nicholas was in the car with us and the amount of cheers, the amount of hi Nicky's, the amount of kids that came over just to give him a hug, uh, you know, it was really inspirational and it really turned out to be, you know, the right move for our family. And so the channel was really geared um, at getting, you know, letting the world get to know who he is. And what we found as well is that, you know, I feel like we're kind of adding energy and this benefit to this whole community of people that I didn't even know existed, frankly. And I was saying to this to Don before we started, Robin, that, you know, this theme of our channel, 
you know, the love that exists in our family, the way that we've kind of tailored our lives to making this whole thing work and be, um, you know, this close knit unit of love and prosperity and all of that is a universal theme. Mm. So we have people from all over the world who I have conversations with on a daily basis. We have, we have uh, viewers from Australia. We have viewers uh, from Scotland. We have viewers from the Philippines, South Africa, the Middle East, um, and all over the United States. And, uh, you know, the message we, messages we receive, and, and we get anywhere from 100 to 300 messages a day that go along with each video. And I do my best to answer each and every one of them. That can be daunting, huh? Yeah, and, it's, and I have to tell you, it's just, it's, we weren't, I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, finding out the kinds of people that want to talk to us was really interesting because we have a lot of people like us who are the parents of children with special needs who feel isolated, you know, who, you know, who are doing their best to move forward, but maybe their, their, friend, their friend circle don't quite get what they're doing or their family. Sure. So it helps for them to have an outlet. Um, hey, can turn that down just a bit? We have a, a whole host of people with special needs themselves who, who view us. We have a lot of young people, which I was really surprised to see. Our second biggest age group of viewers is 18 to 23 years old. Wow. A lot of them are kids who are going to school to be special education teachers. So while I started the whole endeavor to, you know, and, and here's another piece I want to add. I know in these videos, and I watch myself as a parent, it's the be best version of me, right? It's just, it's who I, the guy I see when I see myself in these videos, I say that's who I am. And it's the best, for, I'm, I'm clearly my best self as a father making these videos and being with my family. And that, that's really a driver as well. Sure. Yeah, and so I guess all of it is kind of, um, you know, like ongoing, the reasons why I continue, because I continue to find new motivations mm -hmm. um, and drivers for us to keep going. So that was a really long-winded response. It's all right, cool. Um, this is gonna sound weird. You know how if like you open up a fortune cookie and there's different sayings you can see? Let's just say years from now, we're all not here, and somebody opened up uh, your fortune cookie. And if someone looked into that, what would your message, you want your message to the world to have been? One message, if you could just impart that, what would it be? Uh, I would like everybody to see the bright side of every moment that we have here on Earth. You know, I feel like we're all so fortunate just to wake up and see the sun. So I, I say this every day. Thank you so much for the air in my lungs and the love in my heart. It's going to be a great day. So if we can all kind of see what's right in the world and stop spending so much energy finding what's wrong, I think we'd be a lot better off. What a beautiful answer. That Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Amen to that. I'm going to show a video. Yeah. Next, which is a song that you actually wrote for Nikki, and this is the theme song for your YouTube channel. Tell us a little bit about the song and the name of it, please. Okay, uh, the song is just about uh, my life with Nicholas, the impact it's had on us, what I want to see for him for the future, uh, the fact that I I know that God sent Nicholas to us and. You know, and he's here to make our lives better. The name of the song that I wrote for my son is called Right Here With You. And the song, uh, you know, just my thoughts uh, about being part of an autistic family, my dreams for his future. The fact that I know that God sent him to us as part of my assignment here. Um, and that's, that's what it is. I love that. Thanks. Thank you so much. I hope you like the song. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us again the name of the channel so people everywhere around the world can yeah. tune in and, and subscribe to your channel. Yes, thank you so much. The name of the channel is called Nikki TV Family oh. Autism Blog. But if you go to uh, YouTube and you just search Nikki TV, that's what we go under. And that's N-I-C-K-Y TV. Yep. That is so awesome. So again, thanks so much for having a good talk with us. Thanks for thanks for having me on. This was great. Sure. Nikki, thank you so much, buddy. Can you say bye-bye? Bye, Nikki. Oh, sorry. Goodbye, he Goodbye. said. You make my sunshine, my flowers bloom, air crisp and new. Thankful for your mama's love. 
God who gave us you You brought so much to my life Love like ocean sand A life together has cleared my slate Has made me a man God gave us you Such as my heart, innocence and line. On this road we'll walk together, love with all my might. God gave us you. Thank God for you. You make my life better. It's what you do. I'll always be. So much you've come so far, love to watch you grow. You've touched so many with your heart, and one day you'll tell us so. That's a really good job, Nick. Hold tight, hold tight. In the passing days, in the summer haze, look more like a man. I don't know what tomorrow brings, no, I hold your hand. God gave us you Thank God for you You make my life better It's what you do I'll always be right here with you Motorcycle Mike, the personal injury lawyer. I've been riding motorcycles my entire adult life. During the course of my 30 year career as a lawyer, I've also represented countless injured motorcyclists. If you are one of them, I can be of assistance to you. Go to my website, please, motorcyclemikeesq.com. I'll always be there for you. I'm on your side when you ride. You can Joe DeJesu, our original artist of the week from Good Talk TV show season one, has a brand new release available that you want to download on all of your digital media platforms. Another Sacrifice is the highly anticipated follow-up single to Cry and Miss Maybe released in 2019. Joe is also the host of Jam Acoustic Mondays on Gov's Radio. Please follow 
Joe DeJesu Music on Facebook and Instagram and download Another Sacrifice today. Today we have a special musical guest, Voltaire, from Santiago, Chile. What's happening? How you doing? Amazing. Thanks. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. How did you start out with, with playing, with learning that you were going to express yourself through your music? How did, how did it all begin for you? Uh, it's funny because uh, when I, th uh, I thought that, um, I would start playing because I was a really crazy fan of punk pop from the 90s, like Blink-182, Sun 41. Mm -hmm. um, I don't play that song until this day, but, but uh, it, it was like the, the fire that started me up to, to play the guitar. Um, I went to the US. Uh, I bought my, my first guitar on, in Orlando. I can't remember perfectly. I was 12 years old. And it was crazy, and I haven't, I haven't stopped from there. Wow. So, and how many songs? I'm sorry, Don, go ahead. I was going to ask your, your musical influences now to this day. Who do you, uh, do you listen to? Who do you like? My, uh, my favorite is like the grunge from the 90s. Alice in Chains, Stone Temple Pilots. Uh, I'm from here, South America. Uh, I'm from Chile, so I'm very next to Argentina. Argentina is, is, is crazy for all, all the uh, musical influential. This is, is the one of the best rock ever. And there's a big band that, that I'm a big fan of. It's called Sola Stereo. That in South America, it's like the Beatles here. It's like oh, wow. millions and millions of people uh, went to their shows and, and, and listened to the music. So it's crazy because my influence like full grunge or metal, I'm a big, for me, God is Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen, EDH for me, for me is everything. Wow. Uh, but, but in the other side, uh, South Stadium, Gustavo Cerati, and all the, the, the South American rock is, is a big influence. So if you listen to my music very carefully, you will, will, you will take some, some things for Alice in Chains uh, and, and the rock from here. So that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. As, well, because as I was listening to your new single and Don and I were talking about it, there are some very clear influences that will grab you right away. Alice in Chains obviously was one of them. But as you're yeah. listening and as the song evolves, there are so many different types of music that all kind of come into one song. And it was really interesting. I was really yeah. curious to know what your influences were because of that. That was a great way to describe it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, 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 I'll just start from, from the guitars of the, of the style of music or the ginger of, of music. And, and if you listen, there are very parts, there are a few parts from Alice, from Stone Temple Pilots, etc. That makes a lot of sense. And it's a phenomenal, I can't wait. I'm beating around the bush soon, guys, soon. I can't wait to share it with the audience. It's, it's great stuff. That's great. I have, I have a question. I'm curious. Uh, Voltaire, do you go out as a as a set band? Is it a solo? Do you put together a different band whenever you tour? What 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 does yeah. it surprise of? It's a. I'm a solo artist. Uh, Voltaire is my real name. So a lot of a lot of people ask me why do you choose that name? Very rare and and different. But it's my. In fact, it's my real name. Yeah. Uh, and what I do is uh, I have a stable band, uh, band members that play with, with me, but they are all professionals. So it could be modified in, in terms of the set that I have to play and the place that I have to, to play. So, so it's, a, it's, it's a mix too, because I invite uh, a lot of uh, really cool musicians from Chile, of course, and, and we can play and have a really, really good vibe uh, feeling the music. 
That's that's a great answer. I love that. And being versatile like that is is so uh, that's efficient actually. Depending, like you said, on what the venue calls for, where you're going to play. Speaking of which, have you toured outside of Chile? Have you been to the U.S. or other countries? Have you has it taken you around the world at all? Yeah, I have a I have do a, a very small things, but uh, I played in the U.S. I played in in Long Island uh, thanks to my friend Lenny Spitale. Do you know him? <laughs> <laughs> he was like the man. He was like the manager, and it was it was really cool because uh, I played in, and I sang in, in Spanish. So so having a, a American um, crowd, it, it was really fun. Uh, the people there was very respectful, and they were they were very grateful too because it was very different. It's like it's like a tasting some other country's food. Yeah, my music is like it was like a, a real refresh for that night, in that special place. And like a couple years ago, I went to LA, and I, and I, I can realize I I I, I can have, I, I tip a dream come true that I played with the Stone Temple Pilots with the DeLeo Brothers. Oh wow! And I played with and I played with Alice in Chains. It was like a rock camp. I don't know if you know that brand. That is like a seminary of musicians. And I was the the only uh, foreign guy that that played there. Uh, it was crazy. In fact, this this case is signed by by the Leo brothers. Oh, oh wow! Nice. <laughs> to Voltaire, gracias. So I have a, a big memories playing with them, and it was a dream come true. That is phenomenal. How cool is that? And you got to, like you said, a dream come true. Play with as you said, some of your idols. That's actually yep. it was great. So you have been spending some time in the studio. You've got a bunch yeah. of songs that are ready, and you have a brand new EP that's going to be coming out in a couple of months. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's it's really cool because um, working on of, of the final set that it's going to be like eight or nine songs of my new EP. Um, it, as you know, I, I'm already releasing Mirame. That's my new single. And the next week, I'm going to release another gift that is called uh, Desierto. It's called Desert. So I'm going to send you guys the songs. And, and I'm going to try to, to release songs like from one, one at a time uh, from month. So uh, it's going to be a, a really cool set. Excellent. And they can visit VoltaireOfficial.com? That, yeah, that's right. And Voltaire Meller on Instagram or uh, Voltaire uh, official in Facebook page. Yeah. That wow. sounds great. Thank you so much for sitting down and having a good talk with us. We're so happy that our audience got a chance to meet you and that they Thank are you. about to experience your music firsthand. We ask everybody to please follow him on social media and support cool. what he's got going on. We are fans and we know that you will be too. So stay tuned yeah. and this is Look At Me.
Good Talk with Robin Eve and Donnie Vapor is now available on Roku TV and Amazon Fire TV. Please subscribe to Strong Island Entertainment Channel on either of those services and catch your replay today. Thank you so much for joining us for a good talk. We are live every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook at Strong Island Television. Please like and follow Good Talk TV Show on Facebook. Writing a book is the adventure of a lifetime. Red Penguin Books take pride in giving our authors a publishing experience that is stress-free and celebratory all the way. Some of our authors first approach us with no more than an idea for a book that's ready to sprout. Others submit completed manuscripts. Whether you're at either end or anywhere in between, our goal is to get you published. At Red Penguin Books, we offer options and opportunities that are unique in the world of publishing, and all of them are designed to keep you, the author we so deeply respect, in the driver's seat, unlike other publishing houses. So, if you want to write a book and are looking for a publisher, we've got you covered. Red Penguin Books deal in publishing services, book development, and ghostwriting for digital, print, and audiobook. Call us at 516 516- 448-4993 or visit our website www.redpenguinbooks.com Excited to introduce a father and son team with a business that has a mission to spread happiness. Who doesn't want to spread happiness around the world? I want to welcome Mark and John Cronin from John's Crazy Socks to our program. How are you guys? Very good. How are you, buddy? It's a good day. I'm John. I'm doing my part of my dad, Mark. We are John Crazy Socks. We are, aren't we? Yes, well, we are. What's our mission, pal? Our mission is to happy. I love that mission, and I love the banner behind you. Point at your banner behind you. Everyone can see it. There it is. Look Here we that. go. Yep. And that is maybe awesome. you recognize the face in that banner. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. No. Is that John? <laughs> no way. I mean, with big head. So, tell... Tell Dave, Donnie what your title is. My title, a Chief Happiness Officer. The Chief Happiness Officer. Chief and, Happiness Officer. That has a nice ring to it. I like and, that. and what's your role? I will um, be the of the company. He's the face of the company. So his face is on the logo. <laughs> wow, that makes total sense to me. So guys, let me sit back. My audience can't wait, I know that, to hear all about how you started, it's unique, what you try to do with the products that you move. And let me just sit back and use my two ears to listen to you guys. Tell us all about it. Well, our story starts in a small log cabin in the woods. No. (laughs) It it starts in the fall of 2016. Um, I I was on the last year's school. I went to uh, Huntington High School, and I uh, spent my time in Wilmington Tech program. So John was in high school, but it was his last year of high school. Okay, Wilson um, Tech program as well. People with, right? And what were you studying in Wilson Tech? I started retailing. Retailing. Oh, wow. turned out to be fortuitous. Yes. Um, but uh, people who have a disability can stay in the school system until they turn 21. So John was going to turn 21 that, that next February. That would be his latest year of school. I, I would say, you know, come June, they were going to say, get the heck out of here. You're already spending enough time here. Yeah. Um, John, like everybody else, was trying to figure out, what do I do when I'm done with school? 
right? Uh, right. Uh, I, I look at ideas. Um, I look at school, drug treatment, um, work. Right. Mm-hmm. Did you I, say anything you like? No, I, I don't do the other things. I've been, I've been working with my dad uh, 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 in other offices. So you worked with me before. I did, and, and I work in a, a day camp. I work in the kitchen. You worked in a kitchen at day camp. But, okay, okay. So, but this is not an unusual situation. It turns out there are just not a lot of good opportunities with people with different ability. So, so again, different abil- differing abilities. Differing ability. I like that. I like that so, a lot. You know, John didn't say anything he liked, but he's a natural entrepreneur, right? He sees what would be a problem and turns that into an opportunity. Mm. So what did you tell me, pal? I said, I want to go into, into the business with my dad. He says, dad, I want to go into business with you. Now, that's great. Yeah. Oh, it sounded so fun. And, and, and I, I sometimes joke, and I have three sons, and, and okay. John is the youngest of the three. Right. And, and this is one I can work with. Ah, I love <laughs> but, it. I love it. You know, so his idea was, if I don't see a job, I'll go and create one. Right? I did. What was your first idea? I first idea a fun store. A fun store. A fun store. Well, so, all right, what does that mean? We have no idea. <laughs> okay. What would that be? What would that be? The next idea. A food truck. I have an idea of the movie Chef, a job Favreau. Sure, sure. And okay. that movie about Father Time Finish. So that seemed like great fun. And we're food busy truck. talking about what we could make, but we ran into a problem. What's that? We can't cook. <laughs> <laughs> the comedy is great. I love it. <laughs> so, you know, there yeah. goes the food truck, right? Right. <laughs> but then, right before Thanksgiving, John has his eureka moment. Uh oh. What did you tell me? I did. I want to start creating socks. Why socks is fun, it's colorful. I love it, creative. I always let me be me. I want to create a in my life. John, he had his whole life. He was wearing these things. We used to drive around looking for him. And wow! So, so something you enjoy, something you've worn, something that means something to you, right? Got and it. that's a good place to start. Yeah. Because if it's something that John loved, chances are other people would love it too. That makes sense to me, right? So at that point, if in a traditional approach, once you have an idea for a business, then you stop everything. And you prepare a business plan. Yeah. And you do your market analysis, your competitive research, you do your operations forecasting, your financial forecast, all kick caboodle. Uh, that's not what we did. <laughs> we went the lean startup route. What's that now? We said, you know what? John wants to sell socks online. We'll build a website. We'll get some inventory. We'll put it out there. And we'll find out. Right. They will buy or they won't buy. If there's a market or not, sure. So that's what we did. Okay. Right? We, John already had the name. I did. I got my name. I got my ideas. He had drawings of what a I, website could look like. I did. Mm-hmm. We, we built a website. We got some inventory. The only marketing we did. Yeah. We, we set up a Facebook page. I took out my cell phone. Right. We made some videos. Sure. And who do you think was in those videos? I would think a wild guess. Would it be the face of the business? <laughs> and what were you talking about? I talked about socks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You came up with a catchphrase. Yes. Sock, sock, more socks. Sock, socks, more socks? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, like, um, I like it a lot. You know, part of it is we were bootstrapping. And, yeah. you know, so you can't walk around complaining about what you don't have. You have to make do with what you have. I love that. Yeah. And what day did we open? Uh, we opened a flyer to in 2016. 2016, okay. So, and we didn't know what to expect. And we were very fortunate. That first day, we got 42 orders. Wow. And almost all of them were local, right? You were in Huntington High School. I am. We lived in Huntington, and we had temporary office space in Huntington Village. So people that knew John from the local community. Yeah, they knew us around. And what you what we decided to do with those first orders? Our, our home deliveries. Home deliveries. Wow. So we got red boxes. We put the socks in the boxes. And we looked at it and said, this needs something else. Right. So what else did we put in? I put in um, uh, socks, 
um, uh, I have a heart uh, kisses. Hershey's kisses. Wow. I put a in the And he'd write a thank you note. Like we hey, went across the street. Like socks and a red box. That sounds right? like a Dr. Seuss novel right there. Plus chocolate kisses, plus a handwritten note. Right. Mm. Wow. Then we load up the car and we drive around and John's knocking on doors. I did. There would be times we're out at 10 o'clock at night uh -huh. and he's knocking on doors. Yeah, I look at John and I shotgun. Right. You know, lucky Stanley night. Stanley plus has nothing on you, huh? Okay. <laughs> but... How did people respond? Cosmetics loved it, and they, uh, they put it on so that we uh, I get a word. Right? We had whole families. People started posting on Facebook and Instagram. We'd show up, and families would be waiting for John to come. No way. They would go with customers reordering just to have John come back to their door. I love that. That's fantastic. So that first month, we shipped 452 orders. Oh, my God. And it told us, okay. There's a market. We, we learned four things. We learned a couple of key, key things. One, people want to buy socks. Yeah. Two, uh, I buy socks to me, and the, uh, I, I related to me. They related to John. They liked the fact that we had already pledged 5% of our earnings to the Special Olympics. Glad you brought that up. That was on my list. Of they they like the personal touch, mm. the candy, the thank you notes. Even if now we right away we're shipping around the country, but they like the fact that he was doing home deliveries. Well, how do you scale this up now that you know it has legs? How do you scale it up? Well, um, you find a way. For, you know, first you have to have. The platform, you got to have the goods. Yeah. So, what we went and did was built, we've built a social enterprise. Mm. We have both a social mission and a business mission, and they feed off of each other. They're indivisible. Mm. All we were doing was selling socks, Donnie, you wouldn't be talking to us. Right. We have now done the, more, the competitive research. There are exactly one gazillion other sock companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's gazillion with a lot of zeros. Yeah, yeah. Right? There's a lot of competition out there. If all we're doing is selling socks, we're not doing what we've done, and nobody's going to notice us. Right, sure. If all we're doing is have a nice story about a father and son, and the son has Down syndrome, you're not talking to us either because that's a lemonade stand. Right. But when you combine the two mm. and a drive that we have to show what people with different abilities can do and the giving back, then you can grow the business. Thank you, Pulmonary Wellness Foundation, Good Talk TV sponsor. Please visit pulmonarywellness.com to learn more about this incredible organization. Hi, my name is Sharon, Sharon Gillette, and I'm the owner of One Stitch at a Time. been doing this since I'm nine years old, but it became full-time when my husband was diagnosed with cancer several years ago. And I never went back to work because I wanted to take care of him. I feel what makes me stand out is that I care. I take a personal interest in your project. I take the time to find your correct fit and treat you like a friend, not just a customer. So whether it's embroidery, making patches, printing shirts, doing alterations and repairs, or bringing your ideas to life, you can call me at 631-428-1245 or visit my website at www.onestitchatatime.co.
hire people with differing we abilities do. for your factory? Right. So, well, we don't have a factory. We don't manufacture anything here. We okay. distribute it from here. Uh, our office in Melville, our office and warehouse. I see. So today we have 23 people on our employment roster. Oh, wow. 19 of them have a differing ability. <laughs> How so, awesome is this? Wow. Right? We, what, what we built the business on is really four pillars. So we, we know our mission. And what's our mission? Spreading happiness. Spreading happiness. And that drives everything we do. Mm -hmm. It's four pillars. Inspiration and hope. Um, give it back. Uh, so you can love, make it personal. Right? Mm -hmm. So to this day, every package gets a thank you note in candy. Wow. And we go further. Everybody who works here, we, we, we do our own fulfillment, right? We have our own pick and pack warehouse. Mm -hmm. Our pickers, what do we call them? Our uh, pickers, I have a pocket. Those sock wranglers, right? Sock wranglers. Right. Sock wranglers. And every sock wrangler has, their, has a sticker with their picture and their name on it. And wow. that goes on the packing slip. Oh, I so love that. You get a package from thing. us. Yeah. You're opening it up and you want to show them? Yeah, oh, I, I think I You get a thank you note? You hold that a little closer to the camera lens. There we go. Right. Yeah, we give out a discount card. You get a thank you note. Okay. You get the story of John's crazy socks. Okay. And you get some candy. <laughs> what a win, win, win. Now, I'll tell you a little story about the candy. Okay. What were we putting in when we started? Hershey Kisses. Hershey's Kisses. And it was great. You'd open the package. You could smell the chocolate. Until we got the email from the woman in Florida. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's God. Skittles. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Live and you learn, right? Live and learn. Right? So it's, <laughs> it's making it personal. Yeah. You asked about scale. So we've shipped about a quarter million orders now. Wow. But you wow. make it personal by that attention to detail. You make it personal by the way we connect with people. So if you post a, a picture at our website, John makes a thank you video for you. Um, hmm. You know, it's little things. We put that candy in. So one of our happiness packers says, you know, we sell diabetic socks. So we're sending diabetic socks to people hmm. with candy. That don't make sense. Wow. Now we have sugar-free candy that goes with our diabetic socks. It's I just love paying that. attention like that. Yeah. Right? We have a special note and package that goes to anybody who orders from a military base. So you do that. It's socks you can love, and it's really products you can love. Mm. And we have a couple of basic criteria. Okay. One, it's got to be fun, right? Right. Two, it's got to help us spread happiness. And three, I got to be excited. John has to be able to stand behind it. I, I think that's great. Prove yeah. it and stand behind it. So I'll give you an example. Okay. We have over 2,000 different socks. It makes oh. us the world's largest sock store in terms of choice. Okay. Johnny Boy here owns the world's largest sock store. <laughs> okay. We have all sorts of different socks. We appeal to lots of different people. And we have a, a sock of the month club, yep. greeting cards. And who designs the greeting cards? I did. You do, and other people with different abilities. We now sell masks, um, but you know, masks that give back. So we sell these masks. They're incredibly comfortable. But 10% wow. of the money goes to COVID-19 relief funds to support healthcare workers. That's fantastic. Um, so you yes, asked about scale, we compete every day with Amazon, Target, Walmart. We have to have a great selection. We've got to have great products and great service. So if you order from us today, you can try this, Donnie. You order us, we get that order by three o'clock. That order is going out today. Wow. Same day shipping. We do better shipping than Amazon. What a turnaround, huh? And and Jeff Bezos? Yes. He's not putting a candy and a thank you note in those packages. No, he's not. He is, right? <laughs> I love that. Let me ask. I, I believe I saw 
I don't remember what news report a while back that uh, George H. W. Bush, I believe, wore a pair of your socks. Is that true? They yeah. became you were sock buddies with the former president. It's a great wow. story. Um, in the spring of 2017. Uh, we saw an article about how the former president uh, loved wearing crazy and colorful socks. Mm. So what do you tell me? Um, I want to send those socks. He says, we should send him some socks. Yeah. So John says that a lot. <laughs> so we sent him a box of socks. Sometime later, we get a phone call from his office saying, the president loved the socks. Can we get more? Wow. So we send him more. He then sends John socks. A really touching letter. Then on World Down Syndrome Day, what day is that? I uh, it uh, uh, uh March twenty first of twenty twenty one is is a World Down Syndrome Day. So on on in two thousand eighteen on World Down Syndrome Day, the former president wore John's. In fact, you have him here. Right? Yes, John's Down Syndrome superhero. Down Syndrome superhero sock. Oh wow! John designed. So you might recognize the face on the socks. You kidding me? <laughs> oh gosh! So he wore these and tweeted out, "Thank you to my good friend John Cronin and John's crazy socks for the socks." His office called and asked us for socks that the president and the family could wear to his wife's funeral uh, to honor her legacy, her commitment to literacy. So we sent a box of these book socks from one of our suppliers. He wore those at her funeral. Wow. And he wasn't talking to the press. His only communication that day was to send out a picture of the socks he was wearing. <laughs> John and I, uh, that day, it was a Saturday, happened to be down in West Virginia speaking at a conference. And we start getting contacted because this has happened. And how incredible. Think about it. Yeah. How incredible. You know, for me as a dad. Yeah. That my son here had connected with the president and been there at a time of comfort. What a moving story. I and, love every bit of it. You know, so we sell those socks and they raise money for the Barbara Bush Family Literacy Foundation. Um, a lot of our products now raise money for awareness and different charity causes. So in fact, we've raised over $350,000 for our charity partners. You have multiple fundraising instruments, and I think that's fantastic. It's, uh, you know, because that's part of what we do. It's giving back, right? So 5% uh -huh. of our profits go to the Special Olympics. Right. And why the Special Olympics? Because, because I am a Special Olympic athlete. Special, special Olympics athlete, sure. That's what sports do you play? I play basketball, track and field, um, soccer, and snowshoe. And snowshoe. That, that's it? Only those? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're like this, Tony. John has given himself a nickname for Special Olympics. What is Big that? Big Sexy. Big Sexy. <laughs> you can see he's shy and modest. <laughs> Absolutely. Afraid of crowds. I, could, I knew, it, knew it all along. Wow. <laughs> this is wonderful. So Wait. guys, I want to tell you this. I want to say uh, time went by so quick. I'm going to show a little video in a little bit uh, so you guys can see some behind the scenes that uh, Mark and John graciously sent over to me so you guys can see. But uh, I want to thank you for what you do and for being so inspirational and for appearing on the show so the whole world can learn all about you guys and we can spread joy like you say you want to spread joy and happiness and i think we just did a whole heap of that just well, now thank you we we want people to see what our colleagues can do what john can do we want people to know what people with different abilities could do if you give them a chance and the breach you guys would be john's crazy socks.com if any of our viewers want to order socks or any products that get you through your website that's right, John's. Where is it? Johncrazysocks.com. Oh, oh, also at Mary Hint here. Right there on the wall. Johncrazysocks.com. Pretty straightforward. Uh, pretty straightforward. That's easy. And when you support us, you're not just getting great socks. You're helping us hire people with different abilities. You're helping us give back. And when that package arrives, you get socks 
and a dose of happiness with it. It's a good thing. I love it, guys. Thanks for having a good talk with me today. And uh, we will look forward to checking back in with you in the future, see how you guys are doing. Donnie, thank you. And anything we can do for you, you let us know. Thank you so much. Take care.